Hey, Dorica. Can you check in the... Hmm? Oh, we are? Think it ready now. Good evening, everybody.
We're glad this evening for this opportunity that we could come again to give God praise and thanks for His mercy. I want to say tonight that this is revival time. And we say like the songwriter, revive us again, again and again. Tonight we welcome you all to our revival meeting that begins tonight. We are glad for this opportunity as a church that we could step out in faith, believing in God, believing in His promises, and believe and trust Him for what He will do and what He will continue to do. And so to everyone that is are here tonight, we welcome you in the name of Jesus. You have taken the time off to be here, and so the Lord is here with us, and He will be with us until we finish tonight. I want to welcome those online, those who are worshiping with us time after time. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless you, whatever you desire. We ask that the Lord will grant you that favor tonight. And we pray as we worship the Lord tonight, the inspiration through his men, his women's servant, will bless our hearts. And so let us sit back and let us enjoy the meeting tonight. God bless you. Dwight. Let us all stand as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you tonight for this glorious privilege that we have in Jesus. We are glad for this opportunity that we could come together to worship and to praise you. The song says, revive us again. Revive us, O Lord. Revive us again. We need a touch, Lord so that we can be revived to do service for you. Revive us, O oh Lord, for with love, with grace, with peace, and with confidence. Revive us, Lord, from our past and bring us into the newness of life whereby we can fellowship with you. Lord, we thank you for this privilege and the power of thy Holy Spirit that is available. Tonight, Lord, like the disciples gather in Jerusalem. Jesus said, tarry he here until he have been endowed with power from on high. Tonight, as we start this process, Lord, we pray that thou will please to let us understand that you are the power behind evangelism. Because you have died for us so that we might live. And so we pray that I will come in tonight, be with those online, be with those that are watching tonight, and we pray that I will grant them the same blessing that we would have received here. Be with the church, be with those that are on their way, give them safe journey mercies as they make their, their way here to the house of God. We are in Mount Zion tonight, and we will praise you, and we will praise you as long as we live, because you are worthy to be praised. The Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show it his handiwork. Day unto day utter his speech, night unto night show it knowledge. And so, Lord, we pray that thou give us wisdom, give us knowledge, and give us understanding. So that whatever will be said and done tonight will be to your praise, your honor, and your glory. In Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Be seated, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Oh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord once again. We're going to sing a few couple songs, amen? And we're going to bring back an oldie but goodie. Revive us again. 
since we are talking about reviving us again, amen. We're going to start with 249, praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed redeemer. So I'm going to be quiet this time. <laughs> Amen. Two, uh, 341, to God be the glory. How many of us had a good Sunday? A restful Sunday.
Amen, somebody. Good night, everybody. Will the church say amen? Will the church say praise the Lord? If you're excited to be in the house of the Lord, give God a hand clap. Give God a wave. He's worthy to be praised. I want to welcome those online watching on Facebook and YouTube. We are grateful to have you with us this evening as we magnify and give God the highest praise. What do you say? At this time, we're going to have a moment of prayer. Um, a time of prayer, then we'll introduce a speaker and have our special item of music. So at this time, I'm going to ask Sister Denise to come back. We'll sing the song, uh, Into My Heart, Come Into My Heart, Lord Jesus. And we're going to be in groups of twos or threes. Well, groups of twos, since we're a little small in number, we'll go in groups of twos. And we're going to be pray, praying for God to cleanse us. Amen, somebody? God, to cleanse our hearts and consecrate our minds for service and to do his will so we're praying for cleansing and consecration somebody say amen and those of you online you can do the same as we pray together in this time of worship we need prayer prayer is power and r.a tori says if you're too busy to pray you're too busy to have power amen somebody so we got to have power in this church what do you say so we're going to have our time of prayer and so we're going to be singing the song into my heart come into my heart lord jesus let's all stand together as we sing that song into my heart come into my heart lord jesus uh come in to stay come in i pray come into my heart lord jesus as we sing that song find a partner to pray with as we pray for consecration and cleansing into my heart into my heart come into my
Praise God. Wasn't that refreshing? And I hope it was for those who are joining online as you pray with us and for us in our time of revival. The theme is revive us again. Amen. And this is our time where we can come set aside us as members of our church and even those who are joining as visitors online to seek God's face in holy consecration cleansing as we communicate with God seeking God's anointing seeking God's vision and his grace and favor on our lives for service we're moving into a critical moment in our church's calendar where we're seeking to do serious intentional um, and decisive evangelism amen and uh, we have a few months of activities ahead of us leading into our 10th uh, revival series in August. And so we want to make sure that our vessels are clean. Amen. We got to fix it in here before we go out there. Come on and say amen. We can't show what we don't know. So we have to know God for ourselves because judgment begins in the house of God. So we're grateful for this week of revival and today. Uh, we are favored by, the, by God to have this wonderful woman of God to grace this sacred space. Uh, no stranger to our church. Amen, somebody. Uh, we are grateful and I'm thankful to have Pastor Jose Frampton uh, lives under an incredible life calling. This calling has led into a self-God supporting ministry and her ministry is called he leadeth me ministry touching hearts globally come on and say amen coming from a background of business administration management and education she's honored she honored god's call to the angels university uh seminary from 2007 to 2010 but has been on her ministerial journey since 2006 the ministry is a prayer, fasting, and preaching, teaching, and testimony ministry. Amen? Yeah. Teaching extensively on living spiritually, intelligently. Her service to God's kingdom is broad. And as a servant of God, she is dedicated uh, to be used by him in any way he chooses. Amen? Isn't that beautiful, brethren? Pastor Frampton ministers on a ver variety of levels, particularly to backslidden members, outcasts, former prison inmates, and victims of abuse and violence in various community projects and interests. He's also an author of numerous books, including her most recent publication, Having Spiritual Intelligence and Higher with God. She's a leadership training teaching um, leadership trainer teaching on topics as evangelizing world religions, effortless soul baiting, how to effortlessly catch people. Amen. We need that. She's also a seminar presenter, uh, presenting in various topics, and she's experienced remarkable supernatural encounters with God, including a birth deformity being corrected without medical intervention. That's a testimony all by itself. Recovery of sight to vision loss and completing her three-year pastoral training without student loans. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Pastor Frampton believes deeply in the, in the practice of Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3. The Spirit anoints to set people free. And uh, we're grateful to have you, Pastor, with us. And we're so happy that you have allowed the Lord to use you, and you, you have decided to answer the call in um, speaking the word of God for these two nights. Tonight, she will be with us in person, and those online, we will be online virtually tomorrow with Pastor Frampton. Amen, somebody? Tuesday night, we have Pastor Shane Francis, Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, Pastor Francis, no pastors in the Sharon uh, Seventh Adventist Church in Baltimore, and then we'll close on Thursday with um, Pastor. Dwayne Fraser. Yeah, Pastor Francis is now in Allegheny East Conference. Many of you may not know. And Sabbath, we will pull the curtains down with our communion service. Amen? So it's before Pastor Frampton comes to give us the word of God. We'll be favored by um, special music from our very own. The very own. I love him dearly. He's my brother. I love him dearly. Brother Dwight Anderson. 
we all singing tonight. Amen. We fall down, but we get up, don't we? Because that's the only way you can keep going. If you stay on the ground, you don't move. Amen. And we praise a God that knows that we're going to fall before we even do. Amen. We fall down. I want y'all to sing. But we get up. We fall down. But we get up. We fall down. But we get up. For a saint. For a saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up. Sing it with me. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. tonight community it is such a blessing to be back here with you it has been a while <laughs> amen 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 so thankful to see so many of you I see my dear friend here many of you who are but 
Uh, Dr. McIntosh, it's a blessing to see you uh, tonight. Pastor, thank you so much for the opportunity to share in ministry with the community family. We have a word from, uh, from the Lord, and tonight we are looking forward to sharing in that experience with the Lord and experience the revival of God in this season of life. Amen. Amen. My family is here. My aunt is here with my nieces and nephews who are amongst my biggest fans in the world. The little people just wave. They decided I just drove back from Massachusetts where I was in ministry the whole weekend. They said, where were you? You were gone for a while. So I picked them up and they asked me, how long is this going to last? I said, I am not sure. They have asked me to cut the workshop in righteousness. <laughs> but I give God thanks tonight. Well, let us pray and go directly into the word because I believe the word the Lord has prepared something for us. Unworthy though we be. Amen. Amen. Father, tonight is in the name of Jesus that we say thank you to you for what you've done, what you are doing and will continue to do in this season of life. We want to thank you, dear God, that you are still reviving lives, and we want to bless the ministry here and what you are doing to bring your people and your children into your closeness, God, and to raise us up so that for those of us who may be discouraged, may be feeling a bit worn out in the work, that we can be revived to keep running the race. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Speak a word to us. And speak a word, dear God, tonight that truly revive our spirit again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. I want you to journey with me to the book of John chapter 11. A passage of scripture that we are very familiar with. And tonight we want to look at it from, you know, the perspective of God's moving in terms of us just coming back to our place of spiritual energy and vitality. Amen? The Bible tells us that a certain man was sick. That man's name was Lazarus. I don't know why they tell us a certain man and then tell us it's Lazarus. <laughs> He was Lazarus of Bethany, the very town of Mary and her sister, Matthew. And we know that Mary is a very, you know, uh, powerful name in scripture, but for not always the most complimentary of reasons. It said it was the same Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Boy, I tell you, if that thing happened today, talk about a scandal for a conference. Talk about a scandal for the church. I could see this going to the GC. Ministerial leader is at the house of a member where elders are actually present at the occasion. And one of the most notorious women in town. Not for any good reasons. Considering that everybody knows her reputation. They know that no matter how spiritual you are. If you find a man going into her house, you know it's not for Bible study. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's that same one that walked into a room and talk about she's there to show her love to the rabbi. They're like, Everything about that is questionable. And then she didn't stop there. She brought perfume. Now everybody knows, particularly if you're from the islands. When I was growing up and my relatives, the man in my family was going out on dates to meet with the ladies. 
If they had one bottle of cologne, they put half of that thing for one date. You could smell them a mile away. Everybody know that cologne, perfume, they meant a sense of you're trying to draw people in. And of all things that you could have brought to the occasion is perfume. What exactly are you trying to say? Because it's, it's not like we got you baptized already. So the truth is we don't really know where you stand spiritually. Because look, you're not on the church books either. It said that very one. Also after she took the perfume and did her thing with it. And washed his feet talking about she's showing her love. Every elder in that room was texting. Every spiritual leader in that room began to make connections to say, you guys got to see this. And I believe if this was happening today, that video would have gone viral. And then as if that wasn't enough, she went in for the kill. The woman bent down and releases her hair. My God, have mercy. And I can imagine somebody probably try to step forward to go shut the thing down before it got ugly. And somebody probably said, no, just, just wait. See how she's going to, let, let's see what, how she's going to handle this. And the whole time, Jesus is reclined. <laughs> he's, he's relaxed and he seemed to be really absorbing the moment and not once did the rabbi indicate that this was inappropriate behavior and the church leaders are waiting for him to make the call because if anybody knew this was wrong it was Jesus But you see, when Jesus came in, there was something culturally that you did for people in that day when they had traveled a lot and they had gone through days of travel and entered a room, their feet dirty and dusty and exhausted from the journey. The first thing you did to show that they were truly a guest of honor and somebody that you truly appreciated was in your home. You gave them a basin with some water and you gave them a towel to make sure that their feet were washed and clean. They invited Jesus into the house as a guest of honor, but not one person had a basin and a towel. Which means he was not a guest of honor. <laughs> Which means his presence in the room was not for the very best of intentions. You know, sometimes they ask us to come in a room. And you are excited about the invitation. And they didn't bring you there to honor you. They brought you there to either put you in your place. They brought you there to let you see them being elevated so you can soak it in. As a child of God, you know you don't take every invitation. It's not everywhere that you are asked to be that you should go. And spiritual discernment would let you know not every invitation is of God. The Bible takes time to let us know who Lazarus was connected to. It's important. 
Because they could have just told us, look, a certain man was sick. He had two sisters. No, they told us who the sister was. They said it was the same one that caused the scandal in the church. The reason why Mary took her hair and wiped Jesus' feet was because there wasn't a towel to wipe his feet. None was provided for him. But the same people who didn't provide the towel became the greatest critic. It said her brother, that brother was sick and he needed to be revived. <laughs> And so they sent a word that said, therefore the sisters sent to Jesus saying, Lord, look, the one whom you love is sick. In other words, your boy is sick. Well, they had seen Jesus showed up for many people in town. They had seen Jesus revive people. They had seen Jesus heal the people. They had seen Jesus minister to people. They had seen Jesus do some incredible things. So in their mind, he's, why wouldn't he show up? <laughs> I mean, he did it for strangers. We his boy. He sleep in our house. He eats in our house. He hang out at our house. If anybody is going to see a miracle from Jesus, it's got to be us. You know, there's something about this spiritual journey that we think because we are certain people that that puts us in certain brackets of privileges. And you know, we don't only do it with each other. We try to play that on God. He's like, sit yourself down. You and your writing and your authorship and your degrees and your all, they're nice, but that don't work on me. That's for you on this side of life. From where I rule, no respect of persons. Because often in our journey, we believe that if we do enough great things, and there are enough things behind our names, that we have the right to sin. <laughs> We have the right to misbehave in the body of Christ. Why? Because we got stuff behind our name. <laughs> and God is saying, okay, that works on this side of life. From where I operate, you don't need nothing behind you except a great faith and a heart that is obedient and faithful to what I have called and asked you to do. So they're anticipating that something different should happen for them. They're anticipating that he will show up in quicker time than he did anybody else. And let's not judge them. Because you and I, particularly those of us who have been born in the church on one of the pews. I don't know which one because I was born in a hospital. I was not born in the church. And those 4G, and those 3G, and those 5G, who like to boast of, of how we're just in good and regular standing. And those who just came in at the 11th hour, they just don't understand the things of God. <laughs> My Lord, may God have mercy upon us because we do not understand the things of God. That's why we have the parable of the people who worked all day long. All day they labored. 
Like some of us who have been in the church our whole lives, giving out tracts, doing Bible studies, coming in for Sabbath school on time, keeping the Sabbath holy. Then the person just got baptized and God, you're saying, our reward is the same? That's not fear. I've had people say to me, I don't want anything else. I, I just, I just want to be in the, as long as I make it in the 144,000, I'm good. I'm thinking to myself, you must think this is Washington, D.C. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> it matters to you that much? I don't care. My only concern is that when I wake up in the judgment, I'm in the 144. I'm just thinking to myself, look, with the way things have gone in my life, I just want to be inside. <laughs> the truth is, I don't even care by the time I get in, the place is so jam-packed that my little jacket is even stuck in the back and they have to squeeze it in. So I just want to be inside. I don't even care if I have to wait a whole millennial to see Jesus after he's done meeting with all the VIP. Some, at some point in eternity, we're going to talk. I'm good. I just want to be inside. <laughs> you and your 144,000. <laughs> Seriously. That's the craziness that we have going on in the body of Christ because we don't understand the things of God. Because we don't get to decide these things. And the Bible tells us that they sent the message and they really hoped that Jesus would just leap, just spring forward, just come through. And guess what? He doesn't do that. It said when Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, he said the sickness is not unto death. Wow. <laughs> wow. The sickness is not unto death. It is unto what? The glory of God that what? The Son of God might be glorified. Here's the other key thing that you and I must remember today. The thing is not about us. It's not about us. It's not. We've made it about us. But it's not about us. The word of God said, Jesus said, don't, don't worry about it. It's okay. Last verse is good. They're like, he's not good. Last night, the last medical report said, he's not going to make it. Jesus said, he's good. <laughs> Now listen to this. It said, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Ever wonder about Jesus' love? Why does the love hurt you? Why does it seem that the love bring pain? Why does the love inside hurt? Love is not supposed to hurt. But why does it often seem that God's love hurts? That's what we're learning here. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think about this and I say, you know, truly God is amazing. It said when Jesus heard this, he stayed where he was for two more days. Boy, I can imagine some of us saying, I'm never talking to that person again. That's it. It's, it's done. Are you serious? Are you for real? It's in my house. Sleep in my house. When you needed us, we were there for you. Because I can't imagine the same way they sent the messengers to say that Lazarus is sick. The messengers must have come back and said, you know, he told you guys, don't worry about it. Lazarus is going to be okay. And by the way, he also said he'll see you in two days. In two days? It 
It said, after that, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea. When he knows that Lazarus, the thing is, it's finished. Ever wondered, prayed, boy, you fast. You don't even fast. Fasting is not even for you. Because God in heaven knows you can't even miss a meal. But when the pressure God builds up, you end up fasting three whole days. The thing you love to do, you denied yourself. And after you did all of that, he still didn't show up. You're like, I could have eaten. I could have eaten for three days. <laughs> My Lord. <laughs> it's probably those three days the family probably had their biggest barbecue too. You suffered through that thing. They're like, girl, you're not coming. You're like, no, I, I can't come. I'm just going to stay home. You don't even want to tell them you're fasting because they're probably going to think, girl, you're crazy. You did all of that, and he still did not show up. And you're like, are you for real? When you look at in the broader scheme of things, Trying to trace the hand of God and his imprints and his fingerprints. Sometimes you just cannot see in what way he is moving because nothing he does makes any human sense. Then on one of the days he just got up and he said, you know, let's, let's go to Judah again. And the disciples said to him, but master, you know, they're trying to stone you. You probably might not want to go that way. And Jesus answered in verse 9 and he said, well, there's 12 hours in a day, right? And if a man walks in the day, he stumbles not because he sees the light of the world. But if a man walks in the night, he stumbles because there is no light. Let me tell you this. You know, everybody's excited about Jesus today, gong who about Jesus. Boy, I love Jesus. He's a great guy. Let me tell you, don't get me started. I'm so in love with Jesus. I can guarantee you, if Jesus was today doing the kind of ministry he did back then, many of us would not follow him. No, I'm telling you this. Because the things that this being did, I mean, what did that have to do with anything that Lazarus is sick? Oh, there's 12 hours in a day, and if you walk in the day, you stumble. But if you walk, you're, are you serious? I can imagine the disciples going, what does that have to, apples and oranges, Jesus. Apple and oranges. <laughs> apples and oranges. One has absolutely nothing to do with the other. And you and I probably would be saying apple and oranges the whole journey. What is he talking about? What is he trying to say? It said, these things he said, and after that he said to them, Lazarus is sleeping, but I must go and wake him. Listen to the disciples. Well, Jesus, seriously. <laughs> They're like, well, if he's sleeping, that's good news. Let him sleep. <laughs> he must be tired. If he's been sick for all these days, and then I can imagine one of the, oh, by the way, did you get a telegram? How, how you know he's sleeping? Did somebody else come back with a word? Jesus is like, sit yourself down. Lazarus is dead. <laughs> he said he just told them plainly. Let me go revive him. Let me go wake him up. You see, like now the church is asleep. Mm -hmm. The church is asleep, but the world is on fire. <laughs> you hear it? You see it? You watch the reels? You see the TikTok videos? You see the shorts? CNN? MSNBC? You hear the news? The world is on fire. The church is asleep. Jesus is saying today, let's go wake them up. Let's go wake my people up. 
Have you realized that everybody in the world is talking except Christians? They're muted. Have you realized that everyone has a message to give to the world except the people who really should be talking to the world? As soon as believers begin to speak, um, don't judge me. <laughs> you're, you're being judgmental. As soon as the church begins to call people to the things of God, you know what they say now? You can't speak about sin. It's absolute. That was for the past. I listened to a famous broadcaster interviewing a televangelist and asked him blatantly, should you really be talking about sin today? Is this really for this generation? And the person tumbled, can't call names. They fumbled and fumbled and fumbled and mumbled and got tongue-tied, somebody who had a lot to say prior, and said, well, you know, I think people get beat up in their lives enough. They, they don't come to church to be beat up any further. You know, I'm not here to tell people about sin. You know, people just need to know that Jesus loves them, and he does. And he does. Jesus loves this world, and Jesus loves sinners, and that is why he is warning them to come out of the craziness so that you don't get caught up in the destruction of this world. While the world is awake, the church is asleep. The church is sedated. The church is Heavily under spiritual anesthesia. People are walking but dead. They are afraid to mention the name Jesus. They are afraid to pronounce what they believe. They are afraid to say where they stand. And we have a movement and a generation of believers who have come to be entertained, not to be served. Not to serve, but to be served. Across Christianity, across denominations, the focus is on ensuring that people are properly entertained so they come back. So now worship experiences are theatrical. You can't tell if you're on Broadway or in a worship experience. And even secular music are a part of worship experiences. And people are swagging in churches. Because we have somewhat bought a deception. That in order for people to stay in the church. They must be entertained in the church. But the word of God taught us differently. It said, here's how you keep people in the church. If I be lifted up from this earth, I promise you, I will draw all men and women. If we continue to entertain, what we will find is a generation that is entertained but not saved. So Jesus said, let's go wake up the church. 
The church has fallen asleep. The church has been muted. The church is not allowed to preach on the subject of sin. It is an offense to the world. The church is not permitted to call sin by its name. It's judgmental. So now there is a culture called the cancel culture. You've heard of it. That in order for you to remain current and with a following on your social media platforms and to have people trail you and listen to your messages, you must not tell them what the word said. You must tell them what they want to hear because if you don't you can be cancelled if Jesus ministered today he would not be allowed to minister on many social media platforms if Jesus ministered to, look they cancelled Jesus even when there was not even a cancel culture <laughs> Jesus said I need to go wake up the church because the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church the church is the bride of Christ the church is the love of Jesus' life Jesus died for the church. So he showed up and the first question was, where were you? Where were you when we needed you? You show up when everything is done. You didn't come when he was sick. You didn't come when he was dying. You didn't come when he died. And my Lord, you didn't even show up for the funeral. You call yourself a friend. Did you call him in something? Did you call him when the diagnosis came? Did you call him when you got the letter that they would terminate the mortgage? Did you call him when the church turned on you? And it seemed that no matter what call you made... Nothing. No answer. No response. But what you didn't know is that the whole time he's saying, I'm going to be glorified through you. I'm going to be glorified in this situation. Jesus doesn't address the accusations on him. Where have you been and why haven't you shown up? He said, tell me where Lazarus is. She said, weird, but okay. If you really want to know, we buried him over there. Jesus said, take me over there. And I guess she probably rolled her eyes and said, what, now you want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus said, just show me the stone. Just, I, I just want to go to the grave. She said, you're wasting time. He said, you know, you know, if you believe me today, you could actually witness a miracle. <laughs> you know, the challenge that we're facing in the church today is that we believe in God, but don't believe God. Yeah. You know, there's a difference. You know, you can't believe in God that he exists, that he even has power, that he reigns on high. That he truly came and through his son and did a work in the world. You can actually believe in those things. But when God speak a word and say, this is what I said about your health. This is what I said about your marital destiny. This is what I said about your overall life in this world. We don't believe what he said. 
The word of God said, man shall not live by bread alone, meaning not the bread that you literally eat only, but by the physical matters of life, the things we feel, see, hear, touch, and taste, but that man lives by every word that God says so that even when our circumstances are different from what God said, even when our bodies are saying differently than what his promises on health said, our finances are saying differently than what his promises on finances said, we believe that the God who called things back to life can revive in our lives anything that has died in it. And we don't have to see it to believe it. We believe it because God said it. So our bodies are still exhibiting symptoms. Still pain rocking our bodies. Nothing has even changed in our financial situations. But because he said we are healed by his stripes, then we are prisoners of hope to that thing. Until the day, like Job said, the change comes in our body. Because you see, the just does not live by what is sin. The just lives by faith. What is never sin. What is on sin? The Bible said, when God took Abraham into the sky and said, look up, Abraham, those are your descendants. <laughs> Say what? There's not a child on the sins of life. And for several years, God hasn't shown up with a word. But the Bible said, Abraham believed God not minus the drama though and he said God credited to him for righteousness let me say this to you today the church just looks like it's in trouble but the church is not going to go down it cannot <laughs> it cannot because the greatest resurrection of all time will be first done on the church of the living God because judgment begins at the house of God. He said when Jesus showed up, everybody warned him, you might not want to do this. I'm telling you, in case you don't know, the guy was buried four days. First of all, medically, you shouldn't even go there. Just leave the thing alone. I mean, really and truly, what can you do for him right now? Now you want to have a con. Jesus said, but you'll see Lazarus again. Mary said, I know about the resurrection. I know the 28 fundamental beliefs. Don't forget it. I know these things. I may not have been born in the church, but you taught me well. I know the 28 fundamental beliefs. I know about the resurrection and the state of the dead. Thanks for reminding me that I will see him on the last day in the resurrection. What I was hoping is that I would see him right now, but you already messed up the thing. Jesus said, Mary, you're done. <laughs> Anything else that you want to say? <laughs> Didn't I tell you that if you believe that you could actually see the, the glory of God, and then Jesus signals for somebody to come and to remove the stone before the place where Lazarus laid. In this world today, they're trying to put a stone in front of the church. They're trying to shut down the operation of God's system. Satan is raising gates against the church of God. And both within and without, the church is under attack. And God is asking his people to wake up and to open their eyes and like the good soldiers that they are, to contend for your faith. Fight. 
We call ourselves Christian soldiers. Onward Christian soldiers marching as the war and then we act like civilians. <laughs> the Christian military seem to be the only army where people enter as a private and 30 years later they're still a private. Never climb a rank spiritually. 30 years in the church and has not climbed a spiritual rank. This does not happen in any military in the world. What happens physically happens in even greater levels spiritually. If people climb ranks in the physical, you can rest assured that they climb it spiritually. Thirty years baptized and still drinking milk. Still saying, I don't know how to pray. How could this be? I don't go, I don't go into the word. I'm just, you know, I'm a kind of self-help book person. I, the Bible, I just... I just, I don't do the Bible. Not, not like that. It's, it's just, it's not my thing. My God. My God. God is saying, I want to take you higher. I want to take you deeper. I want to raise you up. What has gotten into your way of your spiritual elevation? What limited you? Who blocked you? Who stopped you? What circumstance? What life decision? What got in the way that in the last several years you have remained in one position spiritually? Now ironically and amazingly, in the body of Christ, we have so many successful people whose walls are decorated with awards, who started off at entry-level positions in their jobs, and within a matter of a year or two years, they had already climbed ranks and were very satisfied and celebrated those things, but do not know where they stand spiritually. It's not the life that we're going to far greater than the one that we would ever leave here on this earth. The Christian army is the only place where soldiers enlist but do not want to die. They're like, God, whatever you do, do me a favor. Yes, I'm enlisting. You see me enlisting. I'm in the reserves. You understand this very clearly. Don't you ever send me on a deployment. I'm in the reserves. Why am I in the reserves? Because I want all the benefits of the military, but don't ask me to fire a weapon. It is likely that I will never be called from the reserve to go anywhere and do nothing. They would have had to kill all their soldiers before I got a call. Yeah. Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. But is that the truth though? <laughs> with the cross of Jesus going on before is that the truth the believer is the only witness who doesn't want to be called to the stand Believers today 
are fighting to be in the witness protection program. The word of God said in the book of Acts 1 and verse 8, you, that child of mine, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And when that happens, you are going to be my witnesses in this community and in communities across the globe. I'm going to use your mouth. I'm going to use your body. I'm going to use your vessel. I'm going to make you a witness on the stands of life. I'm going to put you on the stand before the universe. And you, this child of mine, you will testify of my greatness and the belief said I don't want to be a witness don't put me on the stand don't put me on the stand keep me in the reserve and don't put me on the stand please don't deploy me to any community where they need help please don't deploy me to any hospitals where people need to be comforted please don't deploy me to any evangelistic series where I have to tell people to come to another evangelistic meeting don't deploy me I'm in the reserves but I want the benefits of the kingdom I didn't enlist to die. I enlisted for the benefits. We have to fight. We know we have to die. We got to hold up the blood stained banner. Yes, we do. And we got to hold it up. Until we die. Where are the matters today? Are they only in the Bible? Where are the front liners? You know we're in a great controversy between good and evil. The question you must ask yourself as I pray. It's not that God don't want to revive people or even the, the church. The question is revive for what? So you could sit down again? Revive us again. Revive us again. The Lord is like, I, I, I really, I really would love to revive you. But for what? So you could do the same thing that caused you to die in the first place. So then my whole time in the battle between good and evil is just spent reviving you so you could just sit down. So the issue is not about being revived. The question is revived for what? Because there's not a person that God called into being. And then brought into his service. That was enlisted to be a spectator to this gospel. This gospel. Of the kingdom shall be preached into all this world as a witness to all men. The same believers who tell you, they call people's name to serve. Churches, and I travel a lot. I've been doing this for 17 years. And they're doing nominations for people to serve. Josie Frampton, decline. Are you guys serious? Are you guys for real? But on the job, they call our names. You know you're up for a promotion. <laughs> oh, sis, uh, uh, let me call the intercessors. <laughs> I'm up for a promotion. <laughs> Put a word in for me. You know, they just told me that I may come up for VP, <laughs> director. Put a word in for me. You know, I've had my eye on this thing for the last five years. I've worked so hard. We could say that about the job. We can't say that for the church. Oh, put a word in for me because, you know, my name is up and boy, that thing would mean so much to a family. What would it mean to the kingdom that you and I would serve God and they didn't have to beg us to do it? Because they sure don't beg us on the jobs. We show up for work. People are depressed on their jobs, stressed on their jobs, overwhelmed on their jobs. But the day begins at 4 a.m., don't come back home until 8 p.m. 
Then on the job, they drive you insane. They talk about you. They put you down. They lie on you. They misunderstand you. Yet, we go about the whole day. Good morning, boss. How are you, boss? Never responded. Hi, boss. <laughs> Good morning, boss. Tea, coffee, maybe? Well, we don't do coffee. Roma, maybe? <laughs> Anything I could do for you, boss? <laughs> Yeah, good morning, boss. Three times good morning, no response. Yet, we repeat the cycle every day. We get up on a Sabbath morning, we come to the door. Somebody's probably having a very bad day and they're the greeter for the day. And they didn't smile. They just said, happy Sabbath. It's the last time I put in foot in that church. For the last 10 years, they've disrespected us on the job, put us down on the job, overlooked us on the job, didn't pay attention to us on the job. Good morning, boss. How are you doing? How's the family? <laughs> yes, anything I can do for you at all? I'm here for you. One wrong smile. One wrong smile. Or maybe not a smile. Because somebody probably was hurting all night. Didn't even realize they didn't smile. And you're done. Too many hypocrites in the church. We're done. I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for you. Not only hear anybody who is under the sound of my voice. If we profess to love God. Let that love show. Let the love show. Because when we love, it shows. Some of us have done some crazy things for love. Stupid things for love. Ridiculous things for love. Lose money because of love. Lose ourself because of love. And we continued to love. If we profess to love God, then let it show. The word of God said in John 3, 16, God so loved that he gave. You cannot love and not give. It's a lie. We are living in the end of earth's history. When God returns to this earth, the word of God tells us that the son of man is going to come in the glory of his father. When he does, he's going to separate people as you do sheep from goat. And he's going to look to people on his left and let them know they did nothing in his service. He's going to look at those on the right and he's going to say to them, not well said, not well preached, not well sang. Well done. That means you did something. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Why? Because every servant has a master. And every servant is subject to their master. And every servant does the will of their master. Well done. The song said, have I done my best for Jesus? Who died upon a cruel tree. Have I done enough for his service? Another song said, Will I leave behind an unfinished task? The question is tonight, God wants to revive you. But the question is for what? What will you do with it? How will you handle it? What new will you do in his service? How will you be used by him? And you may be saying, I'm too old. I'm retired. That time for me has passed. In the world, yes. Spiritually, no. 
There's something that everybody can do. So I want to pray for you. Because God wants to revive you and bring your energy back and give you your vitality and, 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 and fuel with you. But he's not doing that for you to warm benches and pews. He wants to shoot you out like an arrow out of a quiver. So that you could be his end time warrior. To awaken things in this world. To speak the good news of a God who has died to bring people out of darkness and into his great and his marvelous light. Would you raise your hand tonight? As I just pray that for you and for me. Because I needed to understand these things myself to be awakened. My God, tonight your children have heard here and online. We're asking to be revived, but for what? If it's to do what we have done for the last several years, then we may as well stay sedated. Because that's not the purpose for which you die. Ignite in us a fire in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit burn within us. Let us do a thing we have never done before. And yes, they may say we're crazy. And some might even call us fanatical. But in the name of Jesus, what we sense is an urgency of your return. And we were called to partner with angels sent to do the work of salvation. And to seek the lost and point to Jesus. Souls that are weak and hearts that are one. Leading them forth in the ways of salvation and showing the path. To life evermore. May our revival not be in vain. But in the name of Jesus Christ. When you wake us up. And you put your spirit in us. Then shoot us out in communities across this world. And even where we are even right now. And let us do a work. That turns this world upside down. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And amen. I say to God be the glory. Well said. Well presented. Pastor, we thank you. Welcome back. Good to see you. You didn't have to come in with such a vengeance. <laughs> but it's good to see you. But like you say, truth hurts, but it's the truth nevertheless. Praise God. Stand with me. Stand with me. God has blessed us with messages for us. We need them, and we ask for the anointing on her for tomorrow night as she will be back again with another message for us. So we want us all to be present. It will be virtual tomorrow night, so it will be online. So <clears throat> we ask all that you, they say, what, what Pastor say, be that, 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 that Apple, digital apostle, Apple apostle, shoot it out, digital evangelist, whatever. Because basically, this is what's needed today. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for allowing us the privilege to partake the message tonight. But now, Lord, revive us for what? Set us free, Lord. Break those shackles that so got us tied down. Release us, O oh Lord, and let your spirit rest rule and abide with us and propel us forward. We give thee thanks and we give thee praise. Get, take us home safely. Continue to be with our guest pastor this evening as she travels home to and fro. Thank her for coming. 
Lord, and we bless, us, bless all that were listening and watching. May they were lifted up and drawn closer to thee. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor's traveling, so trying to pray for him. He might be almost there now. He's traveling to workers' meeting, so y'all just say a little word of prayer for him as he go, as he went. But thank you. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> Thank you. 